Fatshark have just announced their Dominator digital FPV system. And in this video, we're gonna go over some basic specs of the goggles, a little bit about the VTX of what we do know, as well as a little bit of speculation about who the third party is that's behind the system, because Fatshark say it's not DJI. The first thing we need to know about Fatshark's new dominated digital FPV system is that it has up to 1080p of FPV transmission. Now DJI as well as the HD0 system is only limited to 720p. Now, what we learned from Joshua Bardwell's video is that going into 1080p mode extends the latency up to 40 milliseconds. Whilst staying in 720p mode, you're down at the 22 millisecond mark. Now, there's also a few interesting features about the goggles. The goggles themselves, from what we can see in the footage, appears to have the gray left-hand circular polarized antennas. So it seems like there is some work with the TrueRC team behind them, as well as in Rotor Riot's preview video, there is those TrueRC patch antennas that are being used. There are also some key fundamental features in these goggles, which the community is absolutely going to love. The first is canvas mode for beta flight. From what we can see in the initial flight footage released by Bardwell, there is the goggle OSD, but there's also then the beta flight OSD overlaid over the top of it. The other thing is the goggles have their own SD card. The goggles have a 46 degree field of view, but they also have HDMI out. Now this is gonna be a great feature for people that work in cinematography. The goggles are also a 16 by nine screen with 90 frames per second. In the Rotor Riot advertisement, we don't get to see much about the VTX, but what we know from Bardwell's video is it does have onboard DVR, which potentially is very similar to the original DJI. There are no details about cameras at the moment. However, from the Rotor Riot advertisement, it does look to be a Caddx Nebula style camera. Now that leads us to the speculation because when Joshua Bardwell interviewed Greg French from Fat Shark, it was very clear that the partner was not HD0, but he also said the partner's not DJI. And this is where I'm gonna have a bit of speculation. In Bardwell's release video, he shows the goggle menu. And when I was looking at it, all of the different settings and all of the different functions all appeared to be exactly the same as to what is on the DJI FPV system. The other thing I found interesting was the font was also the same as the DJI FPV system. The only difference is that the layout seemed to be a little different, but this brings me to my speculation. Now what we know about DJI is they are currently prohibited from being able to supply products and enter into contracts with the US government and the military. We also know that Red Cat Holdings, which owns Fat Shark, also owns Teal Drones, which has contracts with the US government. This is where we talk about this third party that Fat Shark are working with. Now they won't say who, and rightly so. And this is where the speculation comes in. Because the system is so eerily similar to DJI, even the buttons on the goggles resemble those on the DJI goggles. Not to mention, Budwell commented on a leak that's going around is that there's gonna be a new DJI FPV product known as Avatar, A-V-A-T-A. -A and that the files in the DVR system were prefixed with the word Avatar, A-V-A-T-A-R. So there's too much coincidence to deny that DJI are involved, but I would hazard a guess and speculate that this involvement is very much at an arm's length. The way this could be structured is DJI could work with an independent third party and then license the hardware to them. That independent third party would have to go and buy all the different parts, manufacture them, and then that independent third party can supply RegCat because RegCat supplies the government. That's how we can indirectly get DJI making money from the US government contracts. After all, it's too much of a big pie for them not to. So what does this mean for FPV as a hobby? Well, there's a couple of things. First, having this new third party or this, you know, kind of DJI party involved, does that bring more competition? Probably not. I'd say DJI are probably gonna transition away from FPV in terms of hobby grade stuff and really focus on more consumer grade products like the DJI FPV drone and iterating and evolving on that. There is no confirmation around fixed or low latency, although they haven't ruled it out. 
So that's to say that HD0 is still going to be the king of the fixed low latency FPV system, specifically racing. We also know that because they're using RPSMA connectors, the goggles are transmitting as well as receiving or transceivers. So therefore it's not gonna play friendly with racers. This is really gonna be a product targeted towards the cinematic use of FPV, which is starting to gain a lot of momentum in commercial film production, as well as our freestyle flyers. Finally, in terms of pricing, according to the Rotor Riot store, the goggles are retailing for $599 USD and the VTX for $159 USD. Is that if you're an analog pilot, is this system gonna be enough for you to drop analog and move into the Fat Shark digital world? And if you're a freestyle or a commercial pilot, what are you gonna do with DJI? Um, assuming that perhaps there's no further development on the DJI system and all of the f and all of the development is pushed through the Fat Shark dominated digital FPV system. Let me know in the comments below.